Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards, where we love to improve your home and improve your life. I'm Cindy Dole. And I'm Eric Stromer. And this is a great time to go to flea markets. You know, this is that time. I mean, I think it's fun all, the, this, all year I long. I think this is the height of the flea market season you right now. Is? Summertime. Yeah. yeah. Summer and fall, I think. Uh-huh. That's, that's the best time. I mean, it's it's so addicting to go. I mean, before you do, you want to make sure that you've downsized your stuff so you have room to bring in new stuff. But once Boy, you... is that... You know what? Can I, Let's just spend one sure. second on that. Yeah. Seriously, people, please don't just go out and get more stuff and then <laughs> stack it in the garage and then you have no ability to utilize that space. So yes, to Cindy's point, just clear out a couple of things. Almost do it like an even barter, even trade. If you're going to go out and get a couple of things, promise yourself when you come home with them that you'll get rid of a couple of things. Yeah, for so. every, at least one for one. There you go. For everything, you know. That's a great ratio. Yeah. Yeah. So, so to flea market finds, yeah. you know, when you're out and about and you're finding these odd things you know, there's something to be said about having that creative eye to know how it's going to become something new. Well, see, this is what I think the difference, it's one man's trash is another man's mm-hmm. treasure kind of an idea where, you know, the great designers, great flea market people really see the potential in things. They this, do. This is how I feel about when I walk into a home and someone is talking, you know, I oftentimes I'll go with people, friends of mine, I'll buy houses and say, can you come with me and look at and envision what's possible here and what it would cost, right? So because I've been doing this for 25 years, I've got a great eye for potential, right? Just like you do with design. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. You mm-hmm. find it in everyday items that most people don't see. So this this is, I think, a place where we want to talk about getting you to understand how you can find stuff and acquire it combine two things to make it like something beautiful that's going to hang up in your wall rather than just a couple things, pieces of junk lurking in a, in a flea market somewhere, right? And here's a tip, too, in terms of like, let's say you're going, okay, right, Eric and Cindy, I have no creativity. I don't, I can't go there. Well, you can because if you go to stores like Pottery Barn yeah, or fill in the blank. Sure. Right? Anthropology. Anthropology. Or, you know, any of these they are selling coffee tables that might just be like this one right here with a propeller, right? Yeah. I mean, who would knew, who knew that if you go and you find like a boat propeller and this industrial pulley, and then you combine it with some glass on Put top, a piece of glass on the top, and it's a table. All of a sudden, an instant beautiful. Oh my! Where did you get that? It's a work That's of unbelievable. Art. I know. Seen, you know. Well, where did you get? You just combine two things that were uh, somebody else's trash. Yeah, right? very industrial looking, very artistic, and this is something that probably would be sold at Pottery Barn. That's right. But instead. For, for, Probably three thousand to four thousand dollars, as <laughs> yeah. a matter of fact, right? I mean, so l- the list goes on. What about an old wooden picture frame? Yeah, and just and just and a, 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 sta- a standard issue wood medicine cabinet and yep. an old picture frame that you can then, you know, amend and create this again a nautical theme by then painting the cover of the thing or putting an image of an anchor on it with with white paint on the outside. Suddenly, it looks like this high end classic design that you you'd pay thousands of dollars for. And you could probably still open it and store things inside. I'm you guessing, sure could. right? That's right. What about if you found you know a, a classic chair and a table, and you wanted to do something kind of mid century? Sure, you you want to gussy it up with some bright, vibrant colors, you know. So. You've got these these existing pieces of furniture that look like you know they're okay just mm-hmm. alone they're wood but what if you adorn, what if you amend it with like bright vibrant colors so you do the surface of the table like a light blue and you match the surface of the top third of the chair light blue and then maybe you do like red uh, you know red arms to the to the uh, on the, the chair, on the chairs uh-huh. itself, and then you know the same thing with the with the table. You do like a little red section, so it's mirroring, and you've got these bold colors, but you've kind of gussied up some existing wood furniture that otherwise would just look like something you found in your grandma's place. But no, you've made it better. See, or maybe you're looking for something that you want. Again, you want some storage, and you found this very kind of funky, worn out yellow cabinet that looks like it has some hope, but the paint job, you know, is looking kind of bad. You've heard of shabby chic. Well, why not adding some little things like some extra shelving, putting a mirror on it and, you know, some little of a surround, maybe even some molding. And now it's a more useful storage, great thing for your bathroom. Right. Another great example. What if you find great end tables that look like they're 1950s and it's just not a period of of design that people are really into that much yeah. right now, right? They look kind of old, but they, they have the ma- the madman look but, too. Yeah, but they yeah. So what do you do to kind of bring them to the next level? So again, it doesn't look like you pulled it out of grandma's you mm-hmm. know house you mm-hmm. know back in Jersey or something. Well, here's what you do: 
you find an amazing color palette, like maybe a dark charcoal gray. You paint the exterior of this charcoal gray. And then on the inside of the drawers, you do lime green. Ooh. So that this it's it's now it contemporary because the color scenario is, is contemporary. Uh -huh. It's going to instantly make these these things that you've collected look really cool. It's going to give it kind of a, a designer look too. And those colors, that color combination is really hot right now, Isn't right? It? Yeah. If you had a, a let's say a wooden wall rack that you would find at a flea market, you know, it, it doesn't look very exciting. It has potential because you can hang things on it. But what about adding a mirror and maybe one of those metal radiator screens and some industrial hooks? Where could we get one of those? I guess a metal radiator screen we can also find at a flea market. Sure, or, or, maybe... or the big box store. They yeah. sell this stuff in sheets that you can cut to size mm -hmm. so that it, you know, it kind of brings the industrial and contemporary to an older classic piece. And then paint the thing, the thing black or charcoal and put a chain hook on the back? There you go. Really has an artistic, funky look. I love it. Yeah, why not? Now, what about... Um, I, oh, man, there's so much Like to a do vintage here. metal cabinet, if you had something like that? You could do that. You could find, uh, you know, old windows or doors, and that can instantly become the tabletop with just a piece of glass on it. You know, and find some old wrought iron stools, maybe, and you know, pretty soon you've got yourself a stand-up bar. Oh, cute! You know, and I mean, again, it's like it's just looking at things that would exist on their own that look old and drab, and what can I do to sort of amend it and customize it, mm -hmm. make it look cool and contemporary, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And in terms of. Um you know, if you have like some old chairs that you find, we love the idea. I mean, it's so easy to reupholster a chair. Um, but the key is to just to find the right home for it. Let's say you find a, you know, a, a chair that looks like it has a lot of potential. It's kind of retro chic. Um, you, you know, it has a worn out, you know, cane back, but it has a lot of hope. And if you just find the right place where you're going to put it and the right kind of fabric and paint it up, you know, yeah, bam. pretty much all the f old furniture, I if you either A, paint it, or B, recover it and reupholster it, with the contemporary fabrics that we see now with mm -hmm. these older design f pieces of furniture, that's where the contrast becomes really interesting. Mm -hmm. So any any of these chairs that have great bones, if they're solid, you don't, you want, you don't want to grab something that's really rickety and not solid like if you sit in it and it rocks back and forth and squeaks yeah. if it's a chair it's not going to be maybe good. move on and find something mm -hmm. a little more solid but once you recover it and put more contemporary fabric on it or more contemporary colors on it with paint it completely changes the face of it and and, and you know to that point the same thing with like old workshop you know steel furniture like some of these yes. racks that just look like nothing because they're gray and the paint's coming off Again, my old trick of taking it to the auto body shop and paying 100, 100 bucks for a guy to shoot a uniform color that's more contemporary on some of this old furniture makes it look like brand new, Great really office cool furniture, stuff. Exactly. You know? How about if you found one of those arched windows that have, again, a kind of a basic, pretty look? Yeah, that used to go over the door entry doorways. Those yeah. arched windows are so cool, like half rounds. But let's say you wanted to make it something more personal. You could use your home address number, you know, the numbers of your address um, on, on top of the glass, maybe some a metal number design to put that right yeah, in that Yeah, or just arch. hand paint it on the back yeah, of the glass. Yeah, you That'd could do that. Cool. Yeah. And then add like a little shelf and a couple of hooks. And now this is a great little place right in the entryway. When people come in, they can put some, you know, put their jackets. Great idea. You know, especially if you don't have a, a coat closet, you know, it's instant storage. Exactly. Yeah, and then like, for example, too, have you seen some of these standalone... They're almost like cabinet, uh, just a single drawer that's on on a, a, a leg situation. Oh, sure. So it uh -huh. almost looks like, like a post table. office box. It's mm -hmm. an end table. Mm -hmm. Again, it's more. It's just creating more design sensibility by painting it and then maybe adding a panel of fabric over the front of the drawer. Cute. Right? Maybe so new hardware. New hardware too. Again, more. Co it's different color, amended with some fabric, uh, and the thing looks brand new and cool. Because the idea is you never can have too many side tables, I no. think. You know, whenever you have people over, you go, this is a kind of a thing where it could be, it's small enough where it's just an occasional table. When people come over, you bring it out. And now this is something where, you know, people sitting in one corner, they can share it to put a drink down and have their appetizers, that kind of a thing. That's a great you idea. You know, because you never have enough. And, you know, there's a, again, there's a ton of stuff that you'll find from machine shops that it's all this old metal steel furniture. And this stuff is so cool. If you if you just paint it with a contemporary, more vibrant color, all of a sudden, it just brings life to something that was a drab, dingy thing you found in the corner of an old auto body shop or something. What about if you found some of those really 
ornate frames for artwork. You didn't like the art, but you loved the frame, right? Well, hold that thought. We're going to tell you what you can do with that because lots of ideas of the before and after, things you can do with everyday finds at flea markets, right? Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards. Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. I'm Eric Stromer. And so let's say that you are at the flea market and you've had your eye on this this piece of art. You know, you don't really care about the art, but it's the frame. It's a beautiful, ornate gold frame. It's got the bones. Really pretty. And yeah. you see, you think maybe a couple of them are kind of neat because they aren't very expensive. And But what would you do with it, right? Well, how about just taking it to another level and turning it into a nesting table? It's like a two-tiered table where the frame becomes kind of the decorative room, but then we need to add some wood, right? Oh, so guide, sure. Yeah, yeah. Guide us what, what, well, we, you could use it just a piece of, you know, quarter or three-quarter inch plywood in the center of the frame where the picture would be, right? Uh-huh, and uh-huh. then just either you can stain it and then put a clear coat on it, or you could paint that. But the frame, just the the, the ornate part of the frame becomes the de- edge detail of the table. Like molding almost, right? Is what right? you're saying. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's very pretty. Yeah, that's a great idea. I actually have a bunch of gold leaf frames that my dad had in his storage space that he dearly imparted to me. So uh-huh. now I think I, I might do that. That's a great idea. Because what do you do with a thousand frames? I, I have, And they're, they're valuable. Some of these frames they are really are. valuable. So you might as well utilize them. So if we needed to do this and we didn't have the, the legs, what could we do for the to create, you know, so that actually there's I a think you, I think you'd want to amend another another piece that had the legs gotcha. and then just attach it to uh-huh. that. Uh-huh. So that, you know, you, you just want to hold the frames up sort of hovering over the existing piece that you would use as your base and and decide if that would work or not. And then you just create framing around it that you can then, you know, maybe a piece of one by pine coming down with four legs and then attaching to the outside of the existing piece. There's a little more work in it, but yeah. it's pretty cool. Very cool. Just use your imagination and, and kind of figure out a way to do put it. put a little piece of glass on top of it inside sure. the frame inlay so that now you could put a, a glass, you know, glass of water on there and it's not going to stain the wood. That's exactly maybe. right. You know what else is a cool idea? We did this too. We found a, an old church pew. Oh, and right. And use that for an outdoor seating area and then we just painted it. Uh, actually, we, we stripped it and then we just stained it like a dark, deep green almost like a forest green. It's, and I think that's really cool. And so, some other ideas along the same lines, like a traditional old school desk, for example. Cute, right? cute. Uh-huh. So one of them is a seat, and then the one, you know, the backrest becomes the, the desk of the other guy behind you. Those are really kind of cool pieces if you can find them. The guy behind you who's pulling your hair. Who's pulling your hair or, or shooting spitballs <laughs> at your neck. You know, that Putting guy. Putting gum. That guy who was yeah. me, actually, uh-huh. in, in junior high. But anyway... Instead of just having that, you know, standalone with the way it looks traditionally with the, you know, the backing, the tarred wood and then the wrought iron, have you ever seen people take the maps and use maps as mod podge over the seating surface or the tabletop or the frame, whatever you're doing? I haven't seen it over seating. I've yeah, seen it's it... really cool. And you, nice. can, you can add, you know, clear coat layers over that to kind of keep it impervious to water and wear. Mm-hmm. But that's a great look to, you know, maybe if it's a place you've been on a vacation or just a map of the world that's sort of superimposed on the backs and, you know, the surfaces of tables and stuff. I think that's a really great idea. In fact, I was just at one of these, uh, you know, import stores looking for artwork and they were selling this very thing and you could do it for so much cheaper, right? Where it was a map of the world, but it was in uh, sections of canvas that they divided into six pieces. Oh, that's cool. So you could do that where you could take these maps to kind of go with your your piece of furniture that you've now decorated, but now on the wall, you know, cover over six pieces of canvas, but they are, it's like dividing up whatever that region is. Let's say it's Michigan, you know, yeah, or yeah. it's the Great Lakes, or yeah. it's Europe, and you'd just section off those areas so that they, they connect as they're on the wall, gotcha. for, you know, framed and flying freely sure, kind of a thing. Sure, like yeah. a triptych or whatever those yes. things are called where yes. it's several it, several different si- several different sections make up one whole uh-huh. piece. I know what you're saying. Exactly, yeah. 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 Great. And then again, you know, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about is either paint or, or, a, fabric. or fabric. You can also kind of take these old dressers, for example, and reconfigure them. So say you've got a dresser that has the traditional two drawers on the bottom and then two on the top next to each other. So take out the bottom two drawers 
just literally remove them and also remove the framing and then just have a bottom piece so that it's a nook, almost like creating a bar mm. with drawers on top now. Okay. But you've removed the sections that are the lower two drawers, right? And then right? something goes in there. And then there's a, there's something on the bottom that becomes just the shelving system where your, your liquor or bottles some... or books oh, can perfect. go. It's a uh-huh. little mini bar, right? Uh-huh. Again, great couple of coats of cool paint Cute. that looks more contemporary, and you've changed the you know the structure of a piece that you would normally never use anyway. You have more height for your storage yeah, now, exactly. right? Exactly. What about if you're out at a flea market? Because that's what we're talking about. If you're you know shopping around in your community this weekend and you see all kinds of cool things at this particular flea market, maybe it's at a community center or it's it's you know in the neighborhood. You see those dressing screens, you know that are great barriers. Sure, that's where I throw my silks over before I do my dance of the oh, seven veils. Okay. <laughs> very, very alluring. Actually, I only have six veils, but anyway, okay, go ahead. Okay, well, we'll have yeah. to find that seventh one. We sure do. And while, but while you're seeing that kind of old school elegance, it still is a little dated, you know, for a lot of our homes, but not to worry. You can still cover it up, you know, with some, some fabric that's more modern using a staple gun, right? Well, or... I'll tell you, and even I've done this, you have. And, it, and it's not that big a deal. Same thing with the headboards, you know, yeah. which essentially is a piece of ply with the size of your bed that you use the bed. Padding and the padding. Right. That really gives it that that lushness, right? If you've got the padding on any of this stuff, it really ends up looking great. And then you just wrap it around and staple gun it on the the back and done. End of story. See, and especially if you have a small place, if you're living in an apartment or condo, and, you know, let's say that your kitchen and your living room or your kitchen and your bedroom are like in the same room, this could be kind of a cool divider that gives you that illusion of of more room, more space. I don't want to see you doing your homework. (laughs) You get get behind that screen while you're doing your poli I don't want to see you eating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. No one wants to watch you eat with a beard. Forget it. Now, the other thing is anything, and I mean anything, can become a lamp. Oh, yeah. These lamp kits are amazing, you know, you, and especially with the advent of these new bulbs that have, you see the filament, so it almost looks like an old-fashioned Even light bulb. Even prettier, yes. So then you really don't need a traditional shade that's obscuring the brightness of the light because that light bulb does the trick, right? It mm-hmm. can stand on its own. Having said that, you can make things like wire baskets that are, are can become industrial looking lamps right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. anything that traditionally you wouldn't look at as the as a as a lampshade it's just the shape that you're after not the fact that it has opaque properties that you can see obscured light through it can be completely see through and that light bulb with the new light kit is going to make it look fantastic and it's not just the shade but it's also the base cuz remember too you could get a really great bottle or a vase of sure, some kind, yeah, an old, fill it uh, with things. Yes, of course. And, and you know, if you're going to have to drill through ceramic or glass, you can use, you know, these ceramic drill bits that'll get you a hole in that so you can run your wire for your lamp through that out the back and then and then rewire the plug on the end of it. So whenever you use ceramic drill bits, make sure you have a spray bottle and you spray as you're drilling and then it's kind of It's easy. like you're a dentist now all of a sudden. It really is. As long as you wear <laughs> safety glasses and a mask and then, you know... Uh, you know, just have uh, my my hygienist is so sweet. She, well, the way the way they talk and then expect well, you to me, add, I know. yeah, right. Like so, it's like this: yeah. you're sitting back and you're all set, your mouth's open. So have you seen any movies? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know? Oh wait, and, what was that? And, but they somehow understand you, so that's why I think that they might be geniuses. I guess. <laughs> How about using those printing press trays as some next project? You know what I mean? Let's say you're out, you're out and about again. The flea market find. Yeah. It's an antique press tray. It looks really neat. It has all these little pockets, and you're going, well, that's interesting. It looks kind of. Like I could do something with it. Could I display little knickknacks? Well, of course you could. This could become your little area for little collectibles, right? And maybe it's you collect spoons or little things that are all matching. But then in the middle, you could use some kind of um, like you could use chalkboard paint or put little art or even paint uh, and put like a gla- piece of glass and have a mirror now in the center. And now you have all these little squares on either side. It's a great piece of uh, wall art. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, now back to my lamps. Yep. Things like brass candlesticks and vases. Very common. You're not going to really want to have it. You know, it looks yep. like something out of, you know, Beauty and the Beast, right? <laughs> You're going to you, you use that as a lamp. These can be lamps again. You okay. can create with a lamp kit. They can completely become lamps and they look great that way. 
Otherwise, what are you going to do with them? Like walk around with your <laughs> your nightgown as you're going around with a sleeping hat on? No, they're lamps. Kind of like Phantom of the Opera or something. Bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How about using some of those steamer trunks? I mean, they're charming. They're very trendy. They're big, and they can be used for so many things. I mean, from side tables to even, again, a, a well-traveled bar cart. You know what I mean? After you just kind of add a little color. Um, I watched on PBS. I mean, there there is an art to, if you are, find, are lucky to find, let's say, a Gucci or like a, um, you know, Louis Vuitton uh, uh, trunk of this kind, you can use special finish to bring the life of the real leather and the brass. Wait, um, Louis Vuitton made trunks like that yes, at there's some, some point? Yes, there's really? some really classic. I bet that would be valuable and, then, huh? And you can take it to a special finisher so they bring that brass 